Well, thank you all for uh, being here today. It is uh, humbling, uh, exciting, uh, an honor that Iowa State University was selected to play in the 2025 um, Aer Lingus College Football Classic. This is an opportunity for our institution to be able to go internationally, spread our wings, and be able to show the world how Iowa State University represents. This is far greater than a football game. This is an amazing opportunity for all of our fans and for our student athletes. When this idea originally, uh, originally got the call, you know, many times football coaches would look at all the logistics and say, I don't want any part of this. <laughs> you know, it's just gonna throw us off our rhythm. And when John called me, I said, give me a couple days. And I called Coach Campbell immediately, and I think I might have set a record. You did. Because I called you back within like 20 minutes. <laughs> and he goes, that was quick. <laughs> and I said, Coach Campbell didn't even hesitate. He said, this would be awesome. And why, you know, I'll let him share that, but what he had said to me was, this is everything we stand for in the Iowa State football program. An opportunity to take a group of young men, take our program overseas, and give them an amazing educational opportunity. And so... We're just, again, excited, humbled. Um, we've been on the tailgate tour the last three days, and both Coach and I have commented, just amazed at the number of people that have said, we're going, we're going, we're going. And you know, as somebody myself who's never been to Ireland, and I'm just thinking all these people are just like, yeah, we're going, we're going. So I have no doubt in my mind that there'll be 12 to 15,000 Cyclone fans in Dublin in August of 25 really representing our institution um, in, in a first-class way, so. You know, from the, from the football standpoint, John, I think just publicly, I want to again just say thank you. And thank you for selecting our football program and, and obviously our university and athletic department to be able to represent in this football game. And, you know, we talk so much in our own football program about the difference between a transactional experience and a transformational experience. And to me, this opportunity to take our football program, be such a strong part of this great university and represent uh, Iowa State University in a really powerful way to the entire world, it's a really special experience. And so, you know, you talk about transformational journey for our own young men, 18 to 22 years old, who would never get this opportunity to do something like this. Uh, we're really grateful for that opportunity and we look forward to representing our university and our football program really well. And so, again, thank you very much. We're really proud and grateful for this opportunity and certainly look forward to it. How good is that? <laughs> uh, so thank you coach and Jamie um, it's kind of it's really fun to sit here and officially welcome and thank you to the 2025 Aer Lingus Classic the um, the tagline for for the Aer Lingus Classic is much more than a game and so Kevin and Bill will speak uh, speak on some of those broader implications and programming around it and whatnot um, but I'll, I'll briefly talk about three things. I'll talk about the game, talk about why Iowa State, and what you can expect. So this game will be the fourth game in, this, in the series since we announced the Aer Lingus Classic. It'll be the 10th game play, college football game played in, in Dublin. Um, the Aer Lingus Classic has become a major social and sporting event on the calendar in Ireland. It's become a bit of a must-see, must-attend event. And so um, we've had sellouts the 2023 game. We've got a sellout coming for the 2024 game. We certainly expect a sellout with your, with your game. Um, and your game uh, is probably uniquely a sellout in that we really, uh, we're looking forward to seeing who has more fans there. You know, um, it's a rivalry game. It's, um, you know, two great teams uh, that have a great, competitive rivalry going already. You're both very highly uh, rated going into this year. Both have young quarterbacks that should be back again in 25. So everything sets up, sets up really well. Um, and the stage that it provides on the, on the national, international level for, uh, for the university and for Iowa State is huge. This week zero extra exposure is real. Um, 
We've averaged 4 million viewers, over 4 million viewers on the game since we went to week zero two years ago. Um, and we're seeing it already. Um, ESPN's already talking about it. They're bringing college game day overseas this August for the first time ever outside the U.S. And they're talking about it already. And yesterday, college game day podcast, Reese Davis and Pete Thamel spent the first four and a half minutes of a May broadcast, a podcast, talking about the Ireland game and talking about your game. Um, and so that's, that's just great for the university. So it's a little bit about the game. Um, why Iowa State is really simple. It is, um, it's the right combination of, I would say, football quality and fan quantity. So um, there's not, there's, uh, you know, that's, that's what we're looking for, right? So I, I talked about, you know, obviously where you're projected and, and how your team's performing and what you've got going as, as long as Coach Campbell's been here. Um, and so that's a dream come true for us. But we've also got experience with your fans. Uh, you've got a remarkable reputation for following, loyally following your, your team everywhere they go. We saw it most vividly in San Antonio at the Alamo Bowl back in 2018. And what we saw with your takeover of San Antonio pales in comparison to what I think we'll see in Dublin. Um, Dublin, for being such a great European capital city, is not too expansive. It's not too large. It's not so oversized and spread out. It's got a, a fabulous city center where you can walk to the stadium from there. And so the Cyclone Nation will be everywhere there in Dublin. It'll be another takeover like we saw in San Antonio. Um, so it's really cool uh, what's going to happen there. Then lastly, quickly, what you can expect. Um, this will be both for the, for the players, student athletes, and for the fans. Uh, I proudly proclaim it's going to be one of the best weeks of your life. This will be this kind of thing that people are going to remember. They're going to be telling their kids, their grandkids about for generations to come. Um, as Jamie said, we would expect there will be 12, 15,000 uh, Iowa State fans. And, uh, you know, we look forward to maybe we'll get a little running scoreboard leading up to it of what school's got more fans going over. Um, but it is a business trip for you and the team, and we treat it that way. And you've, we've covered that with you already, and we know that. Uh, you've got a game to play that's a regular season game against a very important opponent. Um, it's not a business trip for the fans. So um, just as much as we're putting, making sure they'll get what they're looking for, we'll make sure the fans get what they're looking for. Um, our history tells us that the average um, the fan will go to Ireland for over a week. They'll hit three cities. They'll spend, uh, they'll spend a lot of time and see a lot of uh, everything that Ireland has to offer, and we uh, look forward to delivering that to the fans. And one, one important note for that, for those looking for information, um, as of today, cyclones2ireland.com is up live and running. And it has all the offerings for uh, travel and ticket and hospitality packages. That's Cyclones, the number two, Ireland.com. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I'm a representative of the Irish state here in the Midwest. And I can just say, when we say it's more than a game, we really mean it is more than a game. Not just Dublin, but the whole country uh, is ready to welcome uh, the uh, student athletes and the fans from Iowa State University. It re the city center really becomes a stage. Uh, for uh, student athletes and the fans to really be ambassadors for not just the game, um, but your university as well. Uh, there's a whole series of events before and after the game, uh, which really help to uh, ensure that fans get a good experience in Ireland, um, but also that there's a whole series of business engagements, cultur cultural engagements, educational events, uh, that really try to tie together uh, and strengthen the links between Ireland uh, and Iowa State University and the state of Iowa as well. Uh, just to speak a little bit about economics, very briefly, uh, Ireland is the ninth largest investor into the entire United States. Uh, there are Irish companies that have investments here in the state of Iowa. And what we've seen from previous games is that those investments start to spark off and increase again. It's a really successful event uh, called the CEO Clubs event, which really looks at strengthening uh, those business links. And it's something that's very, very important uh, for us uh, and I know for the game. But then a little bit to speak about the fan experience, and I know, Bill, you'll speak about it a little more. Uh, but when I say that Dublin is ready to welcome fans, I really mean that Dublin is ready to welcome the fans. It's a weekend that we really look forward to in the year. Uh, we've become quite used to 
uh, Dublin having marching bands in the city centre, uh, cheer squads uh, in our city parks. It's something that we get really, really excited about. In Irish sports, we don't necessarily have that game day experience. We have great sport, but not necessarily the pageantry and the festival around it. And that's something that I think the, the folks in Dublin and Ireland are really ready to welcome. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Uh, for those of you who don't know much about Aer Lingus, we've been flying to the U.S. for 65 years, longer than any other carrier by like 30 years. So we know Ireland pretty well. We fly to 14 cities today. We're going to launch a 15th tomorrow. We'll probably have two more by the time the game comes on, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, we've also been participating in this game or a version of this game for many, many years, so we know how to carry American football teams to Ireland. We've got the best cabin crew in the industry, I can guarantee. Coach, we'll look after your players and you very well. Uh, they'll enjoy an experience that they haven't had before. And for the fans, I think a, a trip to Ireland really is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I take it for granted I go 20-something times a year, um, more than a lot of other people, but it really conversation. It's about meeting people and connecting. And I think what you'll find in Dublin, it's the same kind of people you'd find in Iowa. They want to connect. They want to talk about things. Uh, I think they're going to really enjoy their time. So we're looking forward to carrying you. We have plenty of seats available. We work with John's team in terms of transportation or if you want to book on your own. Thank you. A, a couple other quick follow-up points. Um, I'd say number one is you know, to, to reinforce how much this is far greater than a football game this fall. The, our guests will bring back 20 to 30 um, delegates from Ireland for a home football game. We're targeting the Baylor game. And uh, that Friday night is the Order of the Knoll, which is the campus's largest uh, fundraising celebration each year. The theme, ironically, when I talked to Dr. Winterstein, was international innovation. And so it will work just perfect to um, have our delegation integrated into the Friday night program and be guests of um, all the great alums that come back to campus for that event. I also would say in, you know, in our research, as we, uh, you know, we said yes, and then we researched. Um, <laughs> so um, maybe that one. <laughs> um, you know, many of you know Brian Harden, who is the athletics director at Drake. And, you know, Brian was on the staff of Notre Dame in 1996 when the first game happened. And he called me after he heard we were doing this and said, Jamie, I'm just telling you, it is the most memorable thing I've ever done since I've worked in college athletics. And he said, I still have, you know, my, uh, the Adidas cleats that Adidas made for Notre Dame for that game. And that just resonated with me because that's the message we heard from others. I think um, Notre Dame's coach told you he'd play in it every year if he could. And I know there's other coaches around the country that have lobbied to get in the game. So I really appreciate that John thought so highly of both our football program and our fan base that um, he selected us over and above those. I also want to point out the Weatherwaxes and the Hefleys as uh, two uh, loyal families. Um, you know, Doc has been, uh, as we joked, affectionately over lunch. You know, some teams have a team doctor. We have a team vet. That um, <laughs> So Doc Heffley and Judy are at every away game. And then we have Kathy and Mel Weatherwax, who um, Mel has missed one game, in t one road game in 25 years. And... Um, and, and actually, we've given an exemption for that one game. So they fully plan to be in Ireland this year, or in 25, um, at this game. And, and I appreciate the fact that you came out and um, spent lunch with our guests and are here today. So, um, John, we wanted to present this to you before we throw it out to questions. Um, so we've got a, a 25 Cyclone jersey with Ireland on the back as a little token oh, of our appreciation fantastic. for you selecting us. Thank so, you. Um, and with that, we throw it out to questions. John Travis Hines with the Des Moines Register. You mentioned 12 to 15,000 Iowa State fans as the, the hope or the goal. Where would that fit in historically what fans show up to this game? And I guess what gives you the, the confidence that that is going to be the case here in 15 months? Travis, because you were nice enough to give me a microphone, you're going to get the long version of that answer. <laughs> <laughs> The best way to explain this is, Jamie mentioned the 96 game, 
which was the first one I was involved with. When Notre Dame and Navy went 96, they had 16,000 Americans that went. <clears throat> Same two schools, Notre Dame and Navy in 2012, had 32,000, 33,000 Americans went. Same two schools in 2023, 40,000 Americans went. So this is an event that if people experience, they want to go again. They want that, that and they want to go back and they want to bring a friend and share it with them. So building from that, this year we've got Florida State and Georgia Tech and we've got 24,000 Americans. And um, that's not quite the rivalry game that we've got here. It's not quite a balanced two schools with a reputation for fan travel the way Iowa State and Kansas State have. And so um, we would, we just, uh, you know, we've lived it with, with the Iowa State fans for a number of events with great joy. Um, looking at, we can generally say, what's a school draw at home? What's their trajectory of their program? What are they gonna be the season ahead of it and that season, what are they gonna be projected? And you put all that in and even though this is a total unknown and Jamie was very honest, like, all right, what are your expectations? I have no idea what we'll get. I said, that's my job. Trust me, you'll have over 10,000 Iowa State people there. We just know you will because that's what you've got such a great strong following and we know how that computes out to what'll be there. Just as, as a little bit of background, because not everybody may know that, but so Anthony Travel is our in-house travel agency. That's who's handled Iowa State travel, gosh, since probably before 2010, maybe 2000, some, sometime after 2005. Do you but, want me to say in 2010? 2010. So for the last 14 years have been, um, you know, our official travel agency. So they have a really good um, historical perspective on cyclones and without that we're not here I mean this this partnership is real and we've we we love Iowa State fans we love your athletic director we love your football program this is you know there's there's a lot of options of who could be in this game but this is all built upon that history I have to give Ellen a little credit too right <laughs> Ellen and John went to college together at Notre Dame <laughs> so had nothing to do with Jamie <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I, I think the thing that he loved about it is just the experience. And, and like I said, his response is, if I could play week zero over there every single year, we would do it. And I think he liked the fact that he got his team in a little bit earlier to start fall camp. Um, I think he felt like the experience for the football team, the program was fantastic. And obviously, you know, felt like if he could do that every year, it would be a great advantage for his football program. And so I, I know they came out of that and really got off to a pretty good start from there last year. So, um, but yeah, he was certainly really bullish about it and, and really excited that we were getting this opportunity to go do it. Question for uh, Jamie Pollard. Financially, how is this um, beneficial for your athletic department, your football program, compared to traveling on the road to play K-State? So, uh, you know, for starters, um, this is K-State's home game. So, um, you know, a lot of credit to, you know, Gene Taylor, their athletics director, and Chris Kleiman, their football coach, for agreeing to give up a home game. Um, that's a big you know, that's a big lift and um, being very candid, if the roles were reversed, they, you know, it might not have been as quite a, I don't think I would have made the decision in 20 minutes, right? <laughs> um, so it's, so that's a starter, right? Is the finances, you know, for, for K-State are a lot more uh, complicated because you're taking a game out of Manhattan, Kansas and taking it out of their home game. You know, for us, it's it was gonna be an away game, right? And, um, you know, the contract is set up in a way that, you know, Thanks to uh, Air Lingus, you know that um, you know charters provided to get our team over there and um, you know our essential personnel. Um, we plan to take our marching band. Um, we know we'll take our spirit squad. Um, you know there is a a value to not having to go play a road game in Manhattan in 25, right? Um, we would have spent money to go to Manhattan, right? Um, but somewhere in there, you have to assign a value to the fact that we're going to play one less road game in the conference schedule. And what's the value of that at the end of the year? 
because it could make a difference between winning or losing that game and, and what that does. So, you know, that's another piece of it that is not as black and white. It's a little more gray. But, you know, the, the finances of the game are they cover our expenses to go over essentially. Now there'll be some things we'll do by, you know, I've got Christian. Where are you, Christian? Right here. You know, Christian would love to have probably all – 400 members of the marching band. That's probably not realistic. Um, it's a pretty expensive uh, flight over there. But we've got an arrangement with K-State that we want to try to both take the same number of marching band representatives. Um, and so, you know, that's an added cost because that's not something we would have been doing on the road in that particular situation. But it's going to be well worth it. Likewise for, you know, the same experience for our student athletes that you know our members of our band and a member of our spirit squad will get by getting to go internationally. Uh, Brett Tomeyer with the Iowa State Daily. Uh, to Jamie and Matt, just uh, knowing that Kansas State and Iowa State have played over 100 times, having this as the season opener, just what are the stakes it for that and with the trophy on the line? Let me to go first. <laughs> I, I love Before it. Jamie goes, let me let me deal with that one because uh, I know where that can go sometimes. Um, no, I, I would just tell you, you know, obviously the respect that we have for their football program. I think if you've looked even at the last eight years and the, the games that we have played against each other, they've been great football games. And so um, I, I think I look at it more of it will be a huge football game. I mean, you, you, really the conference race has come down like, over the last couple of years to that game and to be able to play that game right out of the gates will certainly be different and unique. And we've got a whole season to get through before we really put our thoughts into how we're going to handle that. But um, what I would just say, you know, it's a not only is this a great opportunity for our fan base and our football team, this is a huge game and a game that is going to have direct implication on a lot of things. And one of those things is the Big 12 race. So um, we'll, we'll get there mentally on how we'll approach it and where we'll approach it, but certainly the respect that we have for them and their program um, and the excitement that that brings to this game is exciting for everybody involved. Not much to add other than I would just say, you know, it's big for the Big 12. Right. And if it's, uh, you know, it's week zero, it's the first game. Hopefully game day will have a great experience this year and choose to come back. If they come back, it's even a bigger platform for the Big 12 to kind of own, not kind of, we will. We would own week zero and own the buildup, you know, having a whole day of game day talking about, you know, the Big 12 in K-State and Iowa State. And so that, that in and of itself will have tremendous value for all the teams in the Big 12. This is from Matt. I was just wondering, obviously it's a long ways away, but what do you anticipate of the challenge of opening the season with a Big 12 team? Yeah, I, again, that's a great question. I, I, I think those are things that we, as you know me, I'm probably so stuck in presently what the, you know, this season and what's ahead of us. Um, the only thing I would say to that is there's other teams that have done that. Obviously, a couple of years ago, you saw Northwestern and, and Nebraska play, two conference teams play early in the football season. I think the Big Ten traditionally has played a conference game to start the season. So, you know, there'll be ways for us to study and look at that. But um, again, I, the bigger thing is, you, you know, you're going to play a really good football team coming right out the gates. And so, um, you know, we'll have to have a plan to be prepared for it. But uh, I trust myself and our staff to be ready for that opportunity. Pretty good looking trophy over there on the table, too. That would be, you know, added incentive to have in our trophy case, right? Mm -hmm. For John, um, you talked about, or Jim Pollock talked there about, uh, I think it was Matt Campbell actually said, you know, Nebraska, Northwestern, Big Ten, obviously Notre Dame and Navy have a storied history. Have you guys seen um, maybe a tr uptick in numbers or interest when it's a series of opponents that have a storied history playing against each other? Is that how you go about selecting different opponents to come to Ireland and play? I think Jamie and Matt could tell you football scheduling is much more art than science and very complex. So there's a lot that goes into it. We we like the idea that we had a Big Ten conference game this year as an ACC conference game and going getting a Big 12 conference game. Um, that's not an accident. Um, you know, Jamie mentioned people want in this game. Craig Sankey will, I can assure you on this week zero Saturday of this year during the game, I will get a text from Greg Sankey 
this looks great on TV. When, you know, we got we to gotta get something done, you know. Um, everybody loves this stage. Everybody loves this platform. So um, the conference matchup is, is great, but it doesn't have to be. It's more about, as I said earlier, football quality and fan quantity. That's a, that's a pretty good formula for us.